Hi ladies, it is so fun to be with you today. My name is Amanda. I have been involved with Substance Church for a very long time. It is the place that always felt like home to come back to and Substance Moms in particular has such a special place in my heart. I dreamed of becoming a mother and when God blessed me with honoring that dream, it was so much harder than I thought it would be. Having other women come alongside me um, pray for me, encourage me, tell me that someday I would sleep again, um, made such a huge difference in my motherhood. And it continues to be the place that um, connected me to women that see me through the next season. So I just am delighted to get to spend time with you. A little background about me. My husband Ryan and I have been married for 13 years. We have three children, eight, five, and three, boy, girl, boy. And um, one of the things that drew Ryan and I together was that we both come from families that really value family. Um, being grounded in, in a loving family that knows your relatives and spends time with them was something that we really could relate to with one another. But of course, even with those similarities, families are so different. So my family is enormous. My parents come from big families. I have tons of aunts and uncles, lots and lots of cousins. My own family I grew up with, I have three siblings. They're all married. They all have kids and I think they're going to keep having kids. So just getting my parents trying to get us together for a family dinner is 19 people. And those of you who have spent time with my parents, because they're involved with Substance too, they're awesome, um, they always have music playing in the background. So when there are 19 Morgan relatives together, um, it's like the roar of all the people talking and then the music in the background. So there literally is never a moment of silence. <laughs> and I love it. That's what I grew up with. It feels very warm. Um, there's a lot of energy to it. That's my normal. Ryan's family is very small. It's families of like two, two, two kids. And um, unfortunately, Ryan's family got even smaller when he was in high school. His dad died really suddenly of a health complication. And so suddenly his mom was single parenting a 15 year old boy and an 11 year old boy. And I just want to give a shout out to the single moms out there because I married a guy who is an amazing man, both because of his father's contrib contributions, but also because he was raised by a rock star single mom. He's awesome because she is awesome and because she surrounded herself with people um, in her church community who stepped up to help support her boys. Her own parents um, were already involved grandparents, but they came to the boys' games or stayed with them when Becky needed to travel for work. And so I just wanna encourage you single moms that like you are doing hard work, but you're doing an amazing job. So give yourself some grace and like, maybe a pedicure <laughs> when you can go do that again because you 100% deserve it. Um, so anyway, when we're with Ryan's family, um, it's like his little family, his grandparents, um, his aunt and her children, she was also a single mom. And so that group, they are quieter. You're all at the table together where my family, it's like kids table, adult table, and you're eating in shifts and trying to help people. Um, you're part of every conversation when you're in a smaller group. And, and I love them. I love both of those families. Um, but just like you, there are personality types that are really easy for me to get along with. And I just wish we had more time together and other personalities that I'm like, well, see you next year. <laughs> I guess this is it. Um, and those hard personalities, you often get to spend some of your holidays with. So as we're getting ready for Christmas time, I know that there will be interactions I will have, and probably you will too, with people that I wouldn't necessarily choose, but they are in my orbit um, by nature of being part of the same family. And, and even like work functions, maybe you have a holiday party to go to or your husband's holiday party, and now you get to interact with his colleagues and their spouses and they wouldn't be the people you choose. So how do you do that and be your best self? How do you do that and not just um, present yourself well as a peacemaker, but experience peace inside? Um, Let's talk about three tips. And I just have to say, it's so much easier to tell you these tips than to actually have to live them. But I had already two hard conversations this week about what the holidays are gonna look like for us because it's a weird year. There are a lot of you who probably are not um, going to spend maybe actual Christmas with people you would have normally, your traditions are changing, maybe the hard people, now you get to see them over Zoom, which is even a whole other weird dynamic of how you communicate well 
or you're FaceTiming or you've postponed. But regardless, when these people are part of your life, it means there's going to be a family trip eventually, um, a reunion, a birthday, something that you come back together and you want to be your best self. So we've got three P's to think about as you're getting ready to spend time with these people that are just a little more difficult for you. The first one is pray, then prioritize, and lastly, peace make. So the prayer part, I don't know about you, but when I know that um, I have an event coming up where I'm going to be spending time with someone or some people who are difficult for me, um, even people that you love very much can also be the people that make you crazy. Um, my mom and I just had a conversation, we're very close, we love each other so much, she's watching my kids right now. And I am so grateful for her. But the conversation, as we talked about, like our expectations with holidays, literally ended with her saying, I just don't understand you. And me looking at her and saying, I don't understand you either. So I, I guess I just want to also say, it's not about necessarily like people who are so hard or you never get along, but sometimes it's just the tension of the holidays. So anyway, as I get prepared for those, I see it on my calendar, or I, or I remember on my grocery list, oh, I'm supposed to bring that pie or whatever for this gathering, I think, and I wish I wasn't going. <laughs> or, and um, wouldn't it be easier if they couldn't make it this year? The dynamics would be so much more peaceful if that person or that group of family wasn't there. Um, I start to like complain in my heart. And if I'm honest, I just think I'll, I'll process that with Ryan. Don't you think it would be easier if that, that person wasn't there um, or if they handled things differently um, or you might process it with your best friend? Sometimes we do that like, will you pray for me when I'm with that really hard person that I wish wasn't going to be there? And then you're not just, well, it's miserable for you because you're not just um, experiencing like hard dynamics when you're together. You have now made it hard every day leading up to it and you've made it hard for the people around you. Um, Matthew 6 21 says where your treasure is there will your heart be also another way that pastor Peter often um, reframes this is to say feelings follow focus well when I am focusing on all the things that annoyed me about last time or the um, obtuse comment that person made or the way that I felt like they picked a fight by bringing up that topic my feelings just follow it I'm annoyed in advance which makes it so much worse um, instead, 1 Corinthians 10, 5 says, we take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. That's kind of a weird thing. Like, how do you control your thoughts? Well, for me in this situation, it means I have that thought pop in my head. I'm irritated or, or I'm insecure. What about that? Like, I don't want to go because I feel insecure when I'm with those people. They are so smart and I don't, I don't know enough about that topic or these world events. I just don't want to go because I'm insecure then I reframe it as a prayer. And all that means is I say, Lord, help me. It might be only that. That might be all you can get out. Or it could be um, if you're feeling that tension as you lead up to your time together, maybe God prompts you to pray something more specific. Like, Lord, help me to see that person the way you see them. Or Lord, help me to not get in an argument with that person. Do you know I had a family um, trip with some extended family where I literally asked my friends, Ryan and I talked together, um, asked for our people to pray for us and said, our only goal is that we don't get in an argument. We don't know how it happens, but it feels like when this group of people is together, there's an argument and we just wanna be peacemakers. I don't care about the rest, I just wanna be a peacemaker. That was the goal. So you can turn that little temptation to complain into something you're handing to God and saying, would you do something new with this so that I don't fall into old patterns? Now, the next thing to do is to prioritize. And when I describe prioritizing, what I mean is thinking about what will make this feel like a win for you when you are with this group of people or you're celebrating in this way. Um, I think for moms especially, Christmas has so much pressure. As a, as a mom who loves Jesus, I feel the pressure to make it special and holy. I should do all the Advent activities every day. And then as a mom living in the 21st century, I feel like I should do all of the fun, magical Pinterest activities every single day. And often I get to the end of the Christmas season and I feel let down. 
like I didn't do all the things or the ones I did, my kids weren't as excited about it as I thought that they would be and it feels like a letdown. So we started this practice with family trips a few years ago. If you would choose one thing, um, as an adult, you can do it with your kids too, but one thing that is a top priority for you and you make that um, effort to make sure that that thing happens, then everything else that's good about your time together feels like icing on the cake. Um, because that like, I want to have a magical experience or I want everyone to love their time together and never fight and be so appreciative for all the gifts I organized is very elusive. But you have control over your attitude and then your actions, right? And so um, the way this plays out for us is that Ryan's family goes on a trip to the North Shore every fall. And for those of you who don't live in Minnesota, the North Shore is the Lake Superior Shore. And in the fall, it's gorgeous. You've heard people say, go to Boston in the fall, like forget Boston and come to Minnesota. Um, it's spectacular. We, Ryan's been going since he was like a baby and um, we love this trip. So we go, there's lots of traditions involved. Um, we stay at the same place. We go on certain hikes that are special to us. We go to this little town way up north and eat at a certain restaurant. So we look forward to it every year. But when we had children, and they started developing minds of their own and they weren't just like babies we could bring to do everything with us. Um, we had some years where we left feeling really let down and we were like, ah, we, we did the things, but it just didn't feel like what we had hoped. And so we started applying this practice of talking to each other about like, well, what's one thing that would make you feel like the trip was really good? Um, Ryan loves to hunt. He goes grouse hunting in the morning with his cousin and brother. And so I take kid duty first thing and then they come back and we do breakfast together. Um, for me, I love games. And so the when I could say to him, what's important to me is that I at least get to play a game with the adults at some point. Then when his cousin and his wife asked who wants to play Ticket to Ride in the middle of the afternoon and their, our kids are all over the place, I could be like, Ryan, can you take over? Because we already agreed I wanted to do the game thing. And he's like, yep, because we're on the same page. We both are doing something to move towards our priorities together. And then when we have that fun time, and we got a special donut and our kids had a great time up at the little town, that felt like, oh, just extra because we already got to do the things that were so important to us. So circling back to the holidays, when you think about prioritizing for the holidays, it might be things um, like when you go to be with your family that are about your traditions from when you were small. What makes you feel like Christmas is really special? Maybe it's like, I just wanna eat that special meal that I love that my mom only makes at Christmas and it doesn't matter if you don't like it because that's not what you grew up with. This is like my special meal and we'll make sure that we're there for it. Or um, I just wanna make sure we do the nativity reenactment. I did that with my cousins and I want our kids to do it. So you prioritize that that's the thing you really wanna do. Um, I would encourage you to also, if you're married, listen to your husband. A lot of times women can be the calendar keepers in their family. And so give him the chance to think about like, is there something his family does that's special to him? And if he can articulate that to you, the goal when you're with his family might literally be about making sure you honor his tradition. And it's not about you. Like it's not about you having the best time. It's about him getting to experience that the same way that when you're with your family, he's going to honor your tradition. Um, so another practical way that you can make this priority conversation happen is this sneaky stay home um, adult night that we have started doing at our house. So the holidays are already expensive. This way you don't even need a babysitter. You make arrangements to either pick up takeout or have it delivered to you. While that's happening, that's just for the adults. Like you don't tell your kids that you're getting special food. You're gonna make them something fast. Our kids are probably gonna be eating like macaroni and cheese. If your kids eat kale salads, then you make them a kale salad fast and that's great. It will not be happening at our house. Um, so what we do is we feed them their like easy at home meal first early early is the key and then you put them in their pajamas and if you have another room to send them to you set them up with a christmas movie there they will think it's the best night ever because they're cozy and they get to have screen time and you then get to go have your little dinner that somebody else made bonus points if you want to light a candle and make it fancy um 
this is like downtime. So this is recharge time where I would really encourage you, like don't plan to wrap every present that night. Don't make it a job where you are going to address 100 Christmas cards. Like this is just your preparation for all of the activities that are gonna happen, especially like Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. So if you're a single mom, this is the night to like paint your nails, eat the best cookies off the plate of assorted cookies your neighbors gave you. And just think about like, what are the next couple of days gonna look like and what are my top priorities that I'm gonna make happen? And if you're married, you eat your meal and this is like your chance to talk about those priorities where you're not driving there and feeling amped up because your kids wouldn't put their coats on and like you forgot things and you had to drive back to grab the presents or whatever. Like this is chill time where you can talk in advance. You don't have to do major planning. It's as simple as, I just wanna make sure we can stay for family bingo. Like, that's okay. And then you plan how you can make that happen. Now, you also may have priorities that are not like the nice, fuzzy Christmas tradition priorities. And that's important too, that's okay. If your priority is literally, we just wanna give our kids the chance to interact with grandparents who are not involved. Like this is a building block for them to have a relationship with their grandma and grandpa. Then that's it. And then you know when you leave, you have facilitated the chance for them to build a relationship and it doesn't matter if you had the most fun or enjoyed the food the most because your priority was that building block in your kid's relationship. Or we just don't wanna get in a fight, whatever it is. You can um, work towards that priority and then you also can let go of the other stuff, right? So if you know your priority is to whatever, um, play catch in the snow because that's what the cousins always did when you were growing up, um, you threw a football around or whatever, you did that, um, you don't have to worry about all the other things working out just perfectly. So the third thing, now that you have prayed, whenever you start to feel annoyed, you've prioritized a little bit so you know what's important to you, now you're going into the actual event and this is your chance to peace make. Um, so what I do want to mention is this is not the time for you to gently comment on how your um, aunt uses social media <laughs> or um, reframe how you think that person should have addressed their political views or, um, or comment on someone else's parenting, maybe. Um, this is not that day. And even though it's not that day because it's Christmas and like you don't wanna ruin it for everybody, it's also probably never that day because um, God's kindness leads us to, re your, to repentance. It's not because of your well-placed zinger. So even though that's a good feeling sometimes when you feel like you just said the right thing um, to get your point across, you will regret it later and I can tell you that from personal experience. So um, you go into your event knowing you wanna be a peacemaker but what about if the rest of the people in the room don't really care about pe being peacemakers? They enjoy a little friendly uh, debate and you just don't feel like that will be conducive to building a good relationship or a good experience together. Um, you can stand up and clear the table. There are ways for you to serve with your hands and keep your mouth closed so that you are still um, peacemaking and building a positive relationship with your, your family. Um, you could say, I'm gonna to have to think about that and get back to you if they're asking you point blank for your perspective. You, you don't need to just like stonewall people, but it's okay for you to give yourself a little breathing room to think about the topic before you jump in um, to get involved in, in a debate or a discussion. The same goes actually, just a little tip, for if your family or your in-laws are saying, when are we gonna see you to again? Are you gonna to come tomorrow? <laughs> are you gonna come on New Year's? Um, you can say, we're gonna to have to talk about it and get back to you. It's okay to buy yourselves a little time so that you can get on the same team. Um, but what about if there are people who are not a problem because they wanna argue with you? It's because you can't find anything to talk to them about at all. Well, if you only see them a couple times a year, you could easily skirt around them, right? Um, I can tell you in a big family, that's one of the maybe advantages to making it feel peaceful. My family is so big that if there's someone that either is hard for me or maybe we had a frustrating interaction recently, I can just 
Go help with the kids. Check on how my nieces and nephews are doing. Talk to this person over here. Oh, that person that's hard for me is freed up. I guess I'm busy over here. You can, you can do it. You can do that avoiding, but guess what? It's never going to get better when you spend time with them. Um, what if instead, now that you have intentionally prayed for you to see that person through God's eyes, what if, take a big breath, what if your goal and going to this event was to have one meaningful conversation with that person? We do a lot of prep work for our kids, preparing them for um, what kind of manners should they use when they go to grandma and grandpa's house. Um, they should clear the table. They need to say thank you when, if they receive a gift. Um, they should ask their cousins about, do you know that so-and-so is playing hockey now? Like, why don't you ask them about that? Give, we give them all these prompts, but how often do we sit down and think for ourselves? Like, these people are hard for me. What could I talk to them about? And how could I turn it into something positive? Like, could I say, hey, how are you staying connected right now with other people when it feels like you can't see people in person? Because it's hard and I, I need to come up with other ideas. Or um, I, 2020 has been a weird, hard year, but what has been a pleasant surprise for you about 2020? You can set up the conversation so that not only do they have something valuable to contribute, but you're steering the conversation in a direction that's positive. Um, I can tell you that I had a coworker once who was difficult for me right off the bat. I just felt like he was too talkative, tried too hard, interjected, you know, trying to make jokes in the middle of other people's stories or whatever. And my first reaction was just kind of like, okay, enough is enough. But because we worked together, we saw each other regularly and I started asking questions. I learned that um, he was new to his position and he was actually kind of insecure about it. It was a big, a big change from his previous role. Um, he was young and he had been divorced and was now engaged. And there, that was bringing up a lot of um, feelings about his previous marriage. And all of a sudden, I saw him differently. I could see that his humor was a way of coping with um, feeling out like what the group dynamics were in this new office and trying to bring levity even when he felt sad or, um, or nervous about big life changes happening. And when I got to know him, I liked him. Here I had felt kind of like, I don't know if we have any um, thing in common, but I really liked him. And so I think sometimes we feel like we already know our families. We don't have any fresh questions to ask, but you've changed a lot since you lived with them or since your husband lived with them. So what if we could get to know them better and find that maybe you genuinely like them or if you don't feel that um, warm feeling necessarily, you start to see them the way that God sees them. Regardless, the only things you can control are you and your feelings and how you go into it. So if you are praying to see people with fresh eyes, you're prioritizing what's really important to you, and then you go into your situation with the goal of being a peacemaker, you can walk away knowing you accomplished your goal because you controlled your attitude and behavior and you can let God take care of the rest. You can pray when you leave and know that he will take those small steps towards building relations with other, with other people and, and extend it far beyond what your efforts could. So I just pray blessing over you as you go into this Christmas season. I know that you are gonna make meaningful connections with your own little family, with your extended family. Maybe it's going to be in person, maybe it will be um, in more creative ways, but I believe that God can do just incredible things with this unique Christmas season that we're in. So be blessed and we'll see you soon.